Purchase event is the most important conversion action when it comes to e-commerce conversion tracking and Google Ads. So in this video, we are going to see how you can configure that conversion action in Google Ads, how to create the data layer on your Shopify store, and finally, how to configure the tags and trigger that will track this event on your Google Tag Manager. But before that, we need to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on the Shopify pages as well as on the final thank you page. So let's just get to my computer and get the head tracking snippets from the Google Tag Manager container. Click on the container ID on the top right corner and copy the first piece of snippet. And now we can go back to the Shopify store and under online theme, let's just click on themes and under the action button with the three dots, let's click on edit code. This will take us to the back end of the website where we will have access to all the pages of the Shopify store. Let's look at the opening head tag and add the code that we have copied right under here. We need to do the same thing for the body snippet. So let's just copy the body snippet and on our theme file, let's search for opening body tag. For me, the opening body tag is on line 294. So I'm just going to create some space here and paste the code. Let's hit format liquid and hit save. By doing this, we have added Google Tag Manager container on all the pages of the website. However, this does not track the pages on the final thank you page. And in order to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is tracking all the pages of the website, we need to add this code somewhere else too. So let's just exit from this backend of the website and go to the settings tab. Under the settings, you will find an option for checkout. And if you will scroll all the way down, you will find another option for order status scripts and we are going to paste the head body tag of Google Tag Manager right here. Now we can hit save. By doing this, we have ensured that the Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on all the pages of the website as well as on the final thank you page. But before moving to the next step, let's just make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is actually firing. So let's just click on the preview button and this will open a temporary debug window that will be connected with our Google Tag Manager and our Shopify store. And we can see all the tags, triggers, and the variables that has been firing on the website directly on this debug window. Using this Google Tag Legacy Assistant Chrome extension, we can see that our Google Tag Manager is properly firing on the website. We can also see on the bottom right corner that the tag assistance has been connected. If you will visit the debug window, it also says that everything is working fine. So that's well and good. Now we can move to the next step of this video, which is creating a conversion action in Google Ads account. So let's just go over to our Google Ads account so we can actually create the conversion action that we need in our Google Tag Manager container. So uh, this is the new layout of Google Ads and under the goals, you will find conversions summary. So let's just go to the conversion summary where you can add actually all the code that you need. Let's just create a new conversion action and this is going to ask for a website link of your page. But before that, we need to select what kind of conversion we are going to use. Since this Shopify is a web platform, we will be working with the website conversions. So let's just click on websites and now we need to paste the URL of our website. So let's just copy this and we can paste this right here. This step is not really necessary. However, Google Ads just makes sure that if we have any kind of G tag on our website or not. And since it did not find any kind of G tag, we are going to create some manual conversion action. So let's just scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on create a new conversion action. Since the purchase event is under the sales category, we are going to name it purchase. We can also rename the event to purchase. And since we are also going to send the conversion value, we can select the conversion value. You can select any other settings that you want and let's just hit done. Let's hit save and continue because this is the only conversion action that we need for this video tutorial. So once you will hit that, it will take you to the next screen where we are going to use the Google Tag Manager option and we need the conversion IDs and the conversion label. Let's copy the conversion ID and the conversion label and create some variables in Google Tag Manager so we can refer these variables whenever we need them. So under the variables on Google Tag Manager, let's create two new user defined variable, one for Google Ads Conversion ID. So let's rename this one to Google Ads Conversion ID and hit save. And we can do the same thing for the conversion label. So let's just copy the conversion label and go back to our Google Tag Manager container to create a new variable. Let's rename it to Google Ads Conversion Label for Purchase. Great, we can hit save now. Now we have also created the conversion action in Google Ads and we can hit OK on the Google Ads. You might see the status of the Google Ads conversion action right now is inactive. That means none of the conversion has been fired right now. And now we can head to the next step of this video where we need to create the data layer snippet that is actually going to track this purchase event. 
If you will head over to the description of the video, you will find a link to the blog post where you will find this blog post. And we are just going to copy the code that we have added for this uh, custom purchase. And we are going to go back on our Shopify store and right where we added this code snippet for Google Tag Manager head, we are going to paste this code right here and hit save. Now we have successfully added the data layer code and let's just make sure that our data layer code is actually firing before we can create any tags and triggers. So on our Shopify store, let's just go to any of the product pages and add it to the cart and make a test purchase to make sure everything is working all right. To make the test purchase, you can either create a coupon code for yourself or you can create debug session. Let's create a dummy user here for the testing at test.com and let's add some other test details. Great. Uh, I'm using a bogus card right now, so we can do this. For the expiry date, let's just select any date that is in the future. The security code does not matter and the name of the card is bogus code. And let's hit pay now. Seems like we have successfully made a purchase on our website and we are on the final thank you page. We can also see that the debug window is properly connected. You might have noticed that we the debug window was not connected during the checkout session because we don't have access to the checkout pages. And on this thank you page, you can see two different events. One is called user data where we have all the details of the user such as email, phone number, and address we are not collecting phone number therefore it's not there and then we also have the purchase details and if you go to the data layer script we can see that we have all the details that we need for the purchase conversion action as well as the user details for the dynamic tracking on google ads so now we are ready to do everything we need in our google tag manager container so let's just head over to the google tag manager container to create a new trigger that will only fire on some events that are purchase custom underscore purchase so let's click new and let's select the name of the variable as custom event. Uh, we can go back to the debug window to see what was the name of the event and copy this and rename the event to custom event custom underscore purchase. This is the trigger that we need to trigger for the Google Ads conversion action. So let's just go to the tag section now and click on new. Uh, before creating the trigger for the purchase event, we need to create a conversion label that will fire on all the pages of the website because this is a required tag. So under the Google Ads track, we are going to create a conversion linker. It does not require any kind of settings unless you have any kind of cross domains. So let's rename the tag to Google Ads conversion linker and hit save. Once we have created the conversion linker, now we can go to the next step of creating the custom purchase action. For this, we also need to create a Google Ads conversion tracking and we have already created the variable for the conversion ID so we can import that right here and we also have the conversion label for the purchase event so we can also import that for the value of this event we can see that in the data layer we have the value under e-commerce dot value so we can create a new data layer variable that will capture that data layer value so under the variables click on the plus button on the top right corner and we are going to create a new data layer variable and we can rename it to e-commerce dot value and let's rename this to dlv e-commerce dot value we need we might need to do the same thing for some other variables too such as transaction id and we do have the transaction id under the same thing it's e-commerce underscore transaction id so let's just create another data layer variable and we can rename it as e-commerce dot transaction underscore id let's say dlv e-commerce transaction underscore id and hit save we need to do the same thing for currency code we do have the currency code under e-commerce dot currency so let's just create another data layer variable for this one and rename this whole variable as dlv e-commerce dot currency dlv just stands for data layer variable great we do have the product level information and we can ask it to collect it from the data layer we don't have any kind of new customer information so we need to leave this empty and we do have the user details so we can create another variable that will send the information about the user detail. We can click on the automatic collection since we are using the proper data layer structure that Google Ads require. And we can rename this as user provided data and hit save. The only detail we have is the shipping cost and we can get that from e-commerce.shipping. So let's just create another data layer variable for e-commerce.shipping and let's hit save. Now we have successfully created the tag for the Google Ads purchase conversion action. So let's rename it to Google Ads conversion tracking purchase and hit save. Now the only thing left for us to do is to make sure that this tag is properly firing on the event and it is sending data back to the Google Ads account and then we can publish the containers. So let's hit the debug window again. So this debug window is connected with our website. And on our website, let's just select another product and add it to the cart so we can buy it and see if all the events are properly working fine.
once you are on the checkout page you just need to enter the test details again so let's just do that 011 I have entered all of my test details and now this is going to redirect me to the final thank you page. Once I am on the final thank you page, this will trigger the custom purchase event and once you click on this custom purchase event, you can see that the tag has fired and if you will go back to the website, you will see that the Google Ads purchase tag has properly fired on the website. This has sent the value and all the other details. If you will click on the request and go to the URL, you will see all the details that has been sent with this event. We are sending the user details and the browser details and this is the email of the user that has been hashed and being sent back to the google ads account so now we have successfully tracked all the things that we need this working fine you just need to make sure that your remarketing dynamic tag is also working and for configuring google as dynamic remarketing tag click on this video